dear guests, uh, thank you so much for coming to Alibaba Cloud uh, Global Summit uh, at Hangzhou. Uh, it's a special time. Uh, as we all know, uh, Asian Game is uh, doing uh, right now at Hangzhou. So I hope uh, you enjoy my talk and my colleagues' talk and the game if you have time to do so. So uh, as the opening uh, talk for this morning, what I will do is give you an overview of what uh, you know, Alibaba Cloud has been doing in the field of database data management and AI. This is a super exciting field, as we all know. Data and AI, when they come together, it's just like a fusion reaction. It uh, brings a lot of possibility to business across different segments. Uh, so my uh, talk today will focus around the central uh, theme of non-stop data services on limited data insight. But what I will do is show you how we can use a variety of uh, products uh, we are building here at Alibaba Cloud uh, from two different, uh, mainly from two different departments, from the database uh, product unit and uh, uh, the computing platform uh, business unit, uh, to uh, serve our customers with one-stop cloud native data management and data serving uh, services. So the first thing I will uh, highlight to you is the general trends we are observing. We have observed in the field of data management uh, in the last couple of years and in the years to come. So we summarize this in four uh, different uh, categories. One is data management in general is embracing the cloud native trend. Uh, this goes from the design of your system all the way to the, uh, the underlying uh, cloud computing platform. The second uh, uh, trend we have observed is that uh, products built for cloud native application must be platform oriented. What do I mean by platform oriented? Meaning that we no longer have uh, data management software run in silos. Uh, for example, in the past, you have a database software, commercial database software running there. You have a, a cloud, uh, uh, you have data warehouse software running uh, by itself. Then you have a big data platform, big data software running by itself, and so on and so forth. Nowadays, we no longer have those software in silos. Rather, we run them seamlessly together in one platform. That's the cloud platform. And it's super important for the cloud service provider and for customer applications to utilize this platform-oriented mindset to ensure that data flow seamlessly uh, between different engines. You can have different engines, that's fine, but it's super important to ensure that data can flow seamlessly and data can be integrated seamlessly on this platform. More specifically, what I mean is, for example, you data that come from different engines must satisfy the same set of open API, for example, so that they can talk to each other seamlessly without trouble. Uh, that's one example of platform oriented. The next thing is data fabric. This goes hand in hand with platform oriented concept. So data fabric means that you know your data may come from different engines. You have a database engine, you have a big data engine, you have a AI training engine, you have an AI inference engine. That's fine. But it's important to manage you, for example, manage your metadata uh, in a common place. So metadata sharing is really uh, a key concept. So that you you as the application builder or application uh, business owner you know where your data sits at, and you know the semantics of data under different contexts. And with the concept of data fabric, and in particular with the, with the help of metadata sharing, you can facilitate uh, uh, data mining and data intelligence building across different engines, across different products, across different business units. Lastly, it's being intelligent. That's a super... Uh, important trend we have observed, especially uh, given the, the burst of earlier of this year in the field of AI, in, in particular in the, in the field of generative AI, uh, with the uh, example of large language model. Uh, with large language model, you, you can nowadays build applications that be quote unquote intelligent by integrating AI and large language model into the core pipeline of your product and your applications. So those are the four trends we have observed. Ultimately, in the end, we want to build a data platform, as shown in this slide here, so that your data management task becomes as easy and as fun as playing with Legos. So you can have components, engines, with different capabilities, and you can assemble them on the fly 
on demand to suit for different business scenarios, just like playing with labs. So how do we achieve this in Alibaba Cloud? Uh, so we uphold the following four principles while we uh, uh, trace those four trends. One is database and data management platform and infrastructure need to be co-designed. Meaning that today when you build database, big data, AI platforms, you need to co-design those engines with the underlying cloud platform. The second is optimize the core engine. We spend a lot of efforts. Uh, we have one of the best engineering teams on Earth to continuously optimize the core engine code of all, across all our core product lines. The, the, the third thing is focusing on business scenarios. Ultimately, the success of any product is to be proven on the battlefield. field, meaning that it has to, it has to bring business values to uh, customer applications. So we always start with customer business scenarios first, and we work backwards rather than we work forward, meaning we work backwards on business scenarios to, to decide you know, what features we need to build in our products. Lastly, we focus on improving our user experience. We spend a lot of effort not only building great products, but at the end of the day, it has to be easy to use, it has to be intuitive to use. Uh, so improving user experience has always been a priority uh, for our teams. So let me give you an overview of you know, one-stop data management serving from the database perspective. Of, of course, later on, my colleagues from the computing platform uh, uh, business unit will, will give you the perspective from the big data and AI perspective. So from our view, you different business scenario will generate different types of data. Structured data, unstructured data, silent structured data, and so on and so forth. And we bring those data to our cloud platform. And once those data are in our cloud platform, we uphold those four principles and the general trends I have talked about. Meaning that we have different engines to serve different uh, scenarios. For example, we have our cloud native relational database, PolarDB for online transaction processing. We have our cloud-native data warehouse, AnalytDB, and Holograms to serve OLAP scenarios, online analytical processing scenario. We have our big data platform, Mass Compute, for offline batch processing, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we enable metadata sharing so that you enjoy the benefit of data fabric, meaning that once data is on our platform, Data can flow seamlessly between different engines. Uh, it requires minimum effort from the user aspect, meaning that unlike the traditional approach where a user has to spend a lot of effort building, for example, the so-called ETL process, extract, transform, load, on uh, Alibaba Cloud Data Management one-stop platform, we are moving away from ETL to uh, what we call ELT. You don't have to spend a lot of effort and energy on defining how to transform your data from one side to another side. Rather, you just extract load and transform happen on the fly. Uh, because of the power offered by our analytical engines. Uh, and at the end of the day, we also utilize the underlying cloud infrastructure from our IST infrastructure as a service team. For example, most, if not all, of our data management, database, big data products utilize what we call cloud storage rather than local storage, uh, thanks to the benefit uh, and power offered by our IST team uh, and their products. And then at the end of the day, we, uh, we deliver a solution rather than a single product to satisfy different business application scenarios, uh, such as transaction analysis, data insights, uh, digital twin, and so on and so forth. Uh, next, I will give you an overview of our global footprint. So currently, we, offer, uh, we operate in 30 regions with 89 zones. And in 2023, we just opened a new region in, in Saudi Arabia. So this map shows you uh, our current, uh, uh, currently in operation data centers across the globe. Of course, our main battlefield, main market is in APAC region, uh, including mainland China, uh, uh, Southeast Asia, Japan, Korea, uh, and Middle East uh, region. We also operate and compete in the uh, European market and the US market as well. Uh, but of course, given our uh, geographical location, 
our central focus is always the APAC region, uh, which is, I believe, most of the guests today are coming from. Now, I'm leading the database team, so I will spend a little bit of time uh, describing our database products in details. So we offer world-leading database technologies and products. As an example, we've been named as a leader by Gartner Magic Quadrant for uh, Cloud DBMS uh, three years in a row. Uh, we are actually the only winner uh, in the APAC region to achieve this uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, leader quadrant. Uh, due to the resolution, you may not see this figure uh, clearly, but essentially. The only other winners in the leader region are those uh, US winners, uh, US cloud winners and US uh, database and big data winners. And we are number one in the APAC region, not only in mainland China, but also in the APAC region uh, in terms of our database market share. And we've been recognized by different industry leading uh, analysts uh, in different uh, aspects. For example, our data warehouse products have been named as uh, a strong performer by the uh, Forest Wave uh, report. Now, let's look at one of our flagship products, uh, Cloud Native Database uh, PolarDB. Uh, PolarDB is the next generation Cloud Native Database. It features uh, uh, the cutting edge design with the three layer decoupling of storage, memory, and the, and the compute. It's one of the uh, fastest growing database product in uh, mainland China market. Compared to uh, the standard solution of using, for example, a open source MySQL or PostgreSQL or a typical uh, commercial database, uh, PolyB offers you six times uh, OLGP performance under a typical benchmark, for example, SysBench or TPCC benchmark. And with the latest uh, design of HTAP, hybrid transaction analytical processing, it can also improve your OLAP performance uh, by up to 100 times in certain scenarios. And your TCO, total cost of ownership, will be reduced by 50% due to the elasticity cloud native design that PolyDB has. Some of the key features PolyDB offers are cloud native HTAP, serverless, multi master, uh, enterprise grade capability, and a distributed architecture. I will highlight some of the uh, key uh, uh, tech technology inside PolyDB. The first thing is we actually spend a lot of effort to do a hardware software co-design in PolyDB. For example, we equip PolyDB with what we call Smart SSD. So the Smart SSD comes with a FPGA chip inside, and this sits next to the uh, uh, SSD uh, in the storage layer. So any data written by PolyDB to the cloud storage is, uh, is by default processed by this smart SD device so that it comes with transparent compression and under encryption. This helps you reduce the storage cost by up to three times because of the transparent compression and without uh, degrading the performance of your database because it bypasses the CPU uh, of, your, of your computer. It utilizes this FPGA chip next to SSD. Uh, so you can see from these performance results, uh, PolarDB comes with, with a, equipped with SmartSD, offers a significant performance improvement and uh, reduces your storage cost by a significant margin compared to the traditional approach. Uh, the other thing PolarDB comes with is this uh, cutting edge design of three uh, layer decoupling. So, as you can see from this, uh, it's a highly simplified uh, architecture design of PolarDB. It comes with a shared storage, and in addition, comes with a shared memory buffer pool. And then on top of that is your compute node. So, so this three-layer decoupling is one of the best in the field uh, of cloud-native databases. Uh, with this design, it, it gives the power to PolarDB a high elasticity, high availability, uh, and as we will talk about in the next slide, in the next slide, uh, serverless capability in seconds. So serverless is a very trendy topic. Traditional database looks like this, where you have to provision your resource quota ahead of time, and that resource quota has to be uh, larger than the peak of your workload. And the first generation of cloud native database looks like this, where you know you can, you can provision a resource quota initially, uh, uh, but not as large as you know the peak workload. 
and you can elastically uh, upgrade your resource code on demand on the fly. So it forms kind of like a staircase curve. The latest generation of cloud native database and data management platform looks more like this, where I can elastically allocate resources according to the variation of your uh, business workload. And it almost perfectly match uh, the resource needed for your workload. So that, in other words, all the resources allocated, in other words, any penny you are paying goes to serving the workload at the time. So you're not wasting any of you uh, of you of your money or resources when uh, when you operate under this mode. And this is what we call serverless. And PolarDB, with the cutting edge design of three layer decoupling, is able to do serverless in seconds. In, in other words, we can elastically uh, scale out and scale up in seconds uh, on demand, uh, as shown in this figure right here. Uh, this refers to both storage memory and your CPU cores. And in, in fact, we can scale out those three resources independently uh, one from another uh, so that you can get the best according to uh, the, the property of your business workload. Next, I will talk about a new technology called MCI, in-memory column index. Again, utilizing this three-layer decoupling design of PolarDB, we have a large shared remote memory buffer. And in that large shared remote memory buffer pool, we are doing the conversion from row store to column store. As we all know, row store is good for transaction uh, processing, and column store is needed for analytical processing. So what we're doing in PolarDB is utilizing this distributed shared memory buffer pool, and we are converting row store to column store on the fly while you are, while you are processing transaction here, you can do analytical uh, uh, workloads on the mem uh, on the column store right here. Um, we ensure data consistency between the two, so you don't have to worry about data consistent data consistency issues anymore. And uh, uh, better than that, you don't have to worry about ETL uh, anymore, uh, because by default, uh, this guy is the, the inside the engine. It is transferring and converting data for you on your behalf, and we we do all of this. By ensuring snapshot isolation, which is uh, which is uh, which is good enough for most business examples. As you can see, this is this is a real uh, deployment of this technology, where we replace the traditional architecture, where you have to have a message queue, you have to have an ETL, and so on and so forth, to a single deployment of PolarDB uh, with this MultiMaster HTAP capability. Uh, and as a result, the business see a dramatic perform uh, improvement in performance and a great reduction in cost. And PolarDB is open sourced, uh, so we welcome you to check out our open source repository on GitHub. Uh, we do this for two reasons. One is we want to show the commitment uh, to embrace an open ecosystem. Secondly, we want to make sure that our customers don't worry about being locked by any particular cloud vendor. That's why we're doing this open source effort. And we are also writing a cloud native database book to talk about all the technology uh, that we are building inside PolarDB in details. Uh, next, I will spend a couple minutes in uh, uh, describing some of other uh, key products we have. One is Analytic DB, which is our one of our cloud native uh, data warehouse products here at Alibaba Cloud. So uh, it features this what we call the lake house design. Uh, of course, at the core, it's an MPP uh, database. It's uh, just like the traditional Teradata uh, uh, design. But the difference between AnalyDB and those traditional data models, such as Teradata, is that it comes with a cloud native design by decoupling storage and compute, and with a scheduling layer so that you enjoy the best elasticity uh, on the cloud. And it has a unified ac access API to uh, redirect your workflows to either the MPP engine or the BSP box synchronous processing engine for, uh, for processing data on the lake or processing data in the data warehouse. So you, you kind of get the best of both. And we utilize open uh, uh, standard, open access standard such as Apply or Arrow uh, data interface so that you can access the data easily from your storage layer, whether it is in the MPP data warehouse or whether it's in the data lake. 
And I will also briefly talk about uh, you know, products from another business unit that we have, which is the, the computing platform business unit. My colleagues later, right after me, will talk about this in details. So we offer a rich portfolio of big data and AI products. So our flagship product is a mass compute and, and think EMR, uh, Elasticsearch, Holograms, and Pi. So together, they form a complete data pipeline for processing uh, your big data needs and your AI training, uh, training needs. So you ingest your data to our uh, big data platform, and the data is stored in the object storage OSS. And using mass compute, you can easily process your big data workload, a different kind of big data workload, very efficiently. And using Think, you can do stream processing and ingest data to uh, different kinds of data warehouse products we have. And EMR offers you a wide range of open source uh, portfolio uh, of your choice. Then finally, you can use Pi to do uh, AI training uh, uh, efficiently. And in particular, I will, uh, in this slide, will briefly talk about Pi. Uh, my colleague will later talk about this in further details. So Pi is a platform for AI training. Uh, that's what it stands for. And it comes with uh, different components. For example, iTech is for tagging. Uh, DSW is for uh, a, a data studio for interactive, uh, providing you an interactive environment for building and uh, constructing you different uh, AI training workloads. Uh, EAS is for elastic algorithm uh, serving, so that it offers you a wide range of AI model and uh, algorithm to choose from, and so on and so forth. So this gives you a screenshot of uh, uh, Pi work workspace. Uh, that's you know what it looks like when you are using Pi to do AI training. So that would be all for my sharing today, and uh, uh, we I will also utilize this to uh, what we so called AppStar moment to release a couple of uh, major features we have. One is PolyDB together with AnalyDB give you a one stop H tag solution, where you have PolyDB on the left and AnalyDB on the right. You can seamlessly transfer, convert data from PolyDB to AnalyDB. This is what I talked about at the very beginning, from ETL to ELT, so that you don't have to define this expensive and complex uh, ETL, we call this zero ETL process. So business, actually, this is a real deployment of this, this solution in a, in a gaming uh, customer where uh, they see dramatic uh, improve, uh, improvement in performance and cost reduction. Next is, you know, AI is such a hot topic and in Analytic DB we actually release a vector engine so that you can store uh, high dimensional vectors uh, those embedded from your large language model, uh, and together with this analytic DB vector engine, and with any choice of your large language model, you can build a customized uh, chatbot uh, to so-called retrieval plugging uh, to satisfy different scenarios. Uh, so, so here and there is a quick demo. I don't know whether this will show, but uh, can someone click on this? Basically, what this demo will show you is that if I deploy an DB with the vector engine and I ask some quest general questions about, for example, what are the features of an DB, it won't be able to answer it. But now, if I embedded a PDF document with the vector engine inside an DB, not together with the with the vector model, suddenly it can answer those questions with respect to those embedded documents. That's what this demo is showing. Okay. Uh, because of the resolution, you may not see this very clearly, but that's the gist of the demo. So next, on um, PolarDB, we are releasing what we call NL to SQL. So this, together with our AI team, we are building this uh, natural language to SQL translation, where you know you, you drag three tables, and you ask a question in natural language. What this one is asking, what are the most popular singers uh, in the past whatever years, and it would just automatically generate a complex SQL and execute the SQL against uh, three different tables with multiple joints and get the results back to you. Uh, that's pretty much uh, all I have to offer today. And we offer uh, free trials for all our key products. If you're interested in any of the service and the product I just mentioned, you can just go to uh, the website and scan this QR code. It will bring you to the free tier of website on Alibaba Cloud. Uh, and you can try our database, big data, AI products for free. 
And then at the end of the free trial, you can decide whether to keep those services or try something else. Uh, we thank you uh, all for coming for the summit today. And in addition, we thank our customers, partners from both uh, China and outside China. Without the trust of those couples, we won't be here uh, today. Thank you so much.